What's up guys? Great to have you with us today. Really pumped about this one. We are going to be etching some Damascus. So I'm going to run you through the process start to finish. And better still, I'm going to be doing it a completely different way for myself. Hopefully it works a lot better than before. If not, you'll see what not to do. So, like I said, I'm going to be doing this a different method. In the past, I've used ammonium persulfate, which comes in powder form. Um, it's used for etching circuit boards. So, it's got the same, you get it from the same place as ferric chloride, but I didn't happen to have any of this when I was first looking for it, so I'll just grab this. I was never really happy with the result. It always kind of looked just dirty and pitted and you know, just a bit... Just not very nice. So what I did was I went and got some ferric chloride and I spoke to Adam Parker from Parker Knives Australia. He does a lot of Damascus work. He does a lot of really, really nice Damascus work and he is one of the most experienced knife makers I know. Um, so I got some advice off Adam. So I'm gonna run you through his recipe and a bit of his method and see if I can make it work and hopefully we get something really nice. 500 ml bottle of ferric chloride. Need some water. I'm just using distilled water just to eliminate any variables. We need a jar and something to measure it all with. For part two of this method, we need something to set the etch so it stays nice and dark and it actually gets right into the steel. So for that, we've got some caustic soda and we've got a little saucepan. And again, we need some water. Just a couple of other items that we need. We've got a piece of wire with a hook on the end. We've got a small clamp. We're gonna just hook that on the back of the knife so that if and when I drop it in, I can just fish it out with the hook. We've got some scotch brite so we can clean off the ferric. We've got some wax and grease remover. It says brake cleaner. It also says acetone neither of them it's wax and grease remover it's the stuff that spray painters use to clean all the surface contaminants last thing we're going to need is something that we can actually etch so we've got this nice blank from um, this is made by Barry Gardner from Gardner Knives in the Barossa Valley it's been hand sanded down to 400 grit I don't really go much further than that um, in the right light you can see that it already does have a bit of a pattern that's just from the hand sanding. Um, so looking forward to seeing what it comes looking like, what it comes out like from the edge. Okay, now Adam's recipe calls for three parts water to one part ferric. Um, I know it's about a two litre jar. So we're gonna open this up. We've got a liter of water in here. Um, we've got 500 mils of ferric chloride and we've got another another 500 mil of water. So, oh, if I can get the childproof seal. So I'm gonna put in about, I'm gonna put in two thirds of this bottle and see how much room we've got left. Always a splash for good luck. Whenever you're mixing acids, always put the acid into the water. Never put water into the acid. That goes for most things, really. We still have a bit of room, so we're going to top it up with some water. I've been told the weaker the better for this. Leave enough room for a knife. Perfect. So, one last thing before we put it in. The wax and grease remover and the clamp. Stick the clamp on the tang. Some tight. Give it a bit of a spray. Make sure you don't touch it with your fingers too. Okay. 
So what we've got before the edge. All right, fingers crossed this works. Couldn't be happy with that pattern, that's beautiful. That's already so much better than the ammonium persulfate. Never using that stuff again. That's awesome. So we'll just give that a quick rub down. Using some clean Scotch Bright. another dip okay while that's sitting in the etch getting nice and dark it's it's come up awesome I can't believe that that's so much I'm never doing it the other way again um, all right so we're gonna make up this mix so we're gonna put in that much water one and a half liters. I don't have a recipe for this bit. It just said caustic soda and water, so. Bloody child locks. Oh, there we go. Once again, add stuff to water, not water to stuff. Uh, we're not gonna use the whole jar, maybe. I'll put in a splash and then a little bit more for luck. Definitely add this to water. Don't add water to that. That's that's boiling as it is. So we're going to pull this out. And we're just going to put it straight in. Really happy with how that went. I'll do it that way again. It was surprisingly quick and easy and finally got that beautiful pattern that I wanted. Make sure you check out Adam Parker's work. Um, look up Parker Knives Australia on Facebook and Barry Gardner, who made the steel. Check him out on Instagram, Gardner Knives. I'll put their links in the description below. Check out their work, see what they do. They're both really really great guys they both do a great knife making class as well adam is down in ballarat and barry is in the barossa valley so if you're anywhere near those places and you want to do a knife making course these guys are excellent they've been doing it for a very long time and well as you can see from this they're willing to help out someone that's new to the craft like myself and yeah help everyone make nice stuff so yeah, check their stuff out, do a class with them if you're nearby, and go out and try this yourself. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Every little bit really helps, it spreads my videos around a bit, and it lets me know what you guys want to see in the future. Let me know if you're struggling with something, and I'll see if I can do a video on how to do it. Oh, great. And... Be careful with acids. That wasn't part of the plan.
cleaned the pot pretty nicely though. So there's a little lesson to learn. Don't leave the caustic soda unattended. Maybe it reacts with aluminium too. It's come up really clean. But anyway, keep your ferric chloride sealed up in a jar. Uh, store it out of direct sunlight and it should last for 10 years or more. You won't have to buy that very often. That, that wasn't even 500 mil that I used and I got, uh, that's probably one and a half liters. Next time I'll have a bit more of an experiment on something else to see what I can swap out the caustic soda for. Maybe there's something better, easy, less mess. Um, apart from that, all good. See you next time. Don't forget to check out my website. It's linked below. It's got all my grinders, forges, anvils, uh, swage blocks, all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, just have a look at what we sell and drop us a line if you've got any questions. Thanks very much.